Welcome back to Music Nuggets. Today's nugget is all about wonky John Schofield style licks and it's kind of about two things. So the first thing is just a lick that plays on chromaticisms, but the other two patterns are drawn from the Slinimsky book. So the Slinimsky book is a book written by a classical composer that's just full of patterns that play on ideas from diminished scale and they can be used in a ton of different ways. A lot of jazz, jazz guys used to use them and still use them for getting from a five chord to a one chord um, because it's really just like lots of tension before a resolve. So that's one application for them. Um, but today we're just gonna look at it over a static chord. So we're gonna look at all these things over a B flat seven, sharp nine. So it's like a Hendrix chord. But it's played on a six string root instead of a fifth string root. So the Hendrix chord that people would be familiar with would be like that seventh fret, fifth string root, E7 sharp nine. So like. That kind of vibe. But if we take that and put it on B flat in the 11th fret, we get root, major third, flat seven, and then sharp nine. And a sharp nine is a minor third if you look at it from a different angle. So it's a chord with a lot of tension. It's basically got a major third and a minor third in it. But we're gonna put it down here. So it's like six, five, six, six. For that hot and top kind of vibe. So like. So all these licks that we look at can be played over this, but they can also be transposed, not the first one, but the second two can be transposed in minor thirds uh, quite freely and they will give you similar effects. We'll talk about why that works in a second. Um, but the first one I wanted to demonstrate, and as always, you will be able to download this in the description below. There will be an image file of the whiteboard for you to download. So download that, maybe have it at the side while you're watching this video. But the idea behind this is it just kind of plays on B flat dominant vibes in a chromatic way. So it's going like nine, eight, nine, eight, seven, eight, six, eight, six, seven. And I'm gonna stop at that eight because basically it kind of just uses a little mechanism to go down an octave and play exactly the same thing. So what you're talking about is something that has this feel like, which I call the, the falling down the stairs lick, and I think that's kind of what it sounds like. But it's a good little mechanism to know when you want to get a bit more outside when, when you're playing over bluesy stuff, because it can just as easy go over just a dominant blues. And then from that eight, it goes eight, seven, six. And then it's just repeating from this eight. Mm, boom, 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 boom. Then it's just gonna repeat what happened here. So this is just an octave down from what you did before. So it's like six, five, seven. So I'll do that again. Six, five, seven, five, four, six. So you put all that together and once you get it flowing, it gives you this effect. So like, which is super fun. It has a real kind of flow about it and it lands nicely on the root of the chord each time. So like, and you can carry that down if you want to move from the one to the four chord in blues. Then you could be like, because that's gonna be the third of chord four. So you could be like over. That is gonna land really nicely there. Um, so I'm not gonna to spend too much time on these. Um, I think it's good if you just mess about with this yourself. Deliberately not put rhythm on these things as well because you could kind of do anything you wanted with them. You know, 
know, you could phrase it any way you like, and you can just use bits of it if you like. Um, I think I originally learned this from a YouTube video where the guy was mixing that with diminished triad pairs. So I think originally it went like. So that's like. If you look at my diminished triad pairs lesson, I'll put a link to that at the end, that's just playing on that stuff, it's playing on this sound. On that sound. Um, so yeah, that's the falling down the stairs lick. Not gonna talk any more about that. The next thing is, let's talk about Slonimsky patterns. So like I said before, he's a composer who wrote an enormous book of patterns that are based on uh, mutations of diminished scale stuff. So basically what you're doing is you're picking a phrase and then Sometimes it's completely contained within the diminished scale and sometimes it doesn't have to be. It's kind of up to you. Um, the book starts off with a kind of key about how to create the patterns, but it also just has thousands of pre-prepared patterns. I know that John Coltrane was a big fan of this. Um, and this one I think is actually a, a Coltrane lick really up until about here. They're like a really famous Coltrane lick. Um, but this one, I'm really fond of this. I learned this in uni. Um, guitar player who was my teacher called Hafter Medwell um, showed me this. And I didn't understand it for a long time. I didn't realize it came from Slonimsky for a long time, but I really liked the sound of it. And I used to just use it over dominant chords. And again, we, we can do that over this, over this B flat vibe. Um, but basically what it's doing is, <laughs> And that seems really complicated in terms of fingering, and I guess it is, but really all it's doing is it's taking that pattern, and this is the whole principle of Slonimsky stuff. That pattern and the relationship of its intervals is just moving downwards in minor thirds. Because of the way the guitar strings are tuned and laid out, it makes it seem really complicated, but if we were to take that up here, so that's me played that shape there. If I just go down a semitone, that's us down a minor third from where we started. And then you can keep going down. So if you look at it that way, it's really not that complicated. It's the same shape, just shifting in minor thirds because that's the nature of diminished scale and diminished arpeggio stuff. But you then rearrange it so that you can play it in one area and it pops out like. And I'm resolving all of these to B flat in some way. So you can see that ends on six B flat note. That ends on one on the A string B flat note. Um, but you can really resolve to any chord tone you like depending on where you are in the travel of the lick. So if I put on the the vamp thing here, so like, and you can start it anywhere you like as well. You could start it here or here or whatever. Um, and you're gonna get interesting kind of wonky vibes over the top of this. So I'll just kind of play it quite straight to begin with so you can hear the sound of it. third so once you know it relatively well there you can move it up a minor third and you'll get a similar effect so like if I start mixing that And you 
obviously wouldn't want to just like play that continuously through something. The idea is to try and land on chord tones and stuff like that, or land on the next chord that you're using it to travel to. Um, but I think it has a really cool sound and you can use it really sparingly um, and it just gives you a little bit of wonkiness whenever you feel like that's required. <laughs> That's first Slanimsky pattern, and you can see the principle with that. You're just moving one little nugget of information around in minor thirds. So the same thing happens with Slanimsky pattern two. Um, and these aren't numbered pattern one and two in the book. There's literally like thousands of these patterns. So this is probably like 268, and this is probably 644 or something like that. I can't remember where where they where this one came from um, But it's a similar vibe. It's basically you're playing on a four note pattern So that's just these four notes here and if I take that up an octave you've got And again if you just slide it down a semitone uh, down a minor third even, so like You're going to get that effect but in a position where you, where you can actually just string it all together so So that's me played the first eight notes so we're up to four there. I'll just take that through in numbers. So six, four, five, three, three, six, six, four. And then we've got five, three, three, six, six, four, five, three, three, six, two, five, five, three, four, two, five. together when you put that together it starts sounding like and again just landing on that B flat to resolve it somehow but really the thing to do is just learn to move about on it learn to travel through it and find little licks that, that suit you you can play these things moving up the way as well so like uh, learn how to reverse it actually learned how to reverse that one. Some of them sound better going up the way than they do going down the way and vice versa. Um, like similar ones that I've learned. Um, going up the way. So like again just learn these and then figure out what you like the sound of and what you think they might be useful for. But again, it's going to give you a similar vibe. It's wonky, like constantly descending, falling into a, into a weird nightmare. Um, so let's use that one a little bit. Again, you can move this about in minor thirds. So if it works here, it'll work here. And it'll work here. So really, really flexible little tools. So.
So yeah, you can hear that effect. Again, it's the same sort of thing, just like wonky falling down the stairs kind of stuff. Um, I'm deliberately over playing the, the, the lick in each case, um, just to, to let you hear the range of it. Um, but again, I would mix it up with more bluesy stuff, like I did at the beginning of the video. Um, and just use it sparingly, use it, use it when you think uh, your solo needs to go somewhere weird or somewhere different. So that's all for that for now. The falling down the stairs lick, similar falling down the stairs licks from Slinimsky patterns. There is a guitar version of the Slinimsky book out there that's tab as well as notation. So I recommend getting that if you're not too hot with notation, otherwise it just gets really frustrating. Um, some of them you will learn them and they just don't sound useful over anything but I've found that the more I come back to it, the ones I thought weren't useful, they I end up learning more in between times and I start to see the uses for them. So it's a hugely fascinating book um, and approach it as you like, just dip into it every now and again. Um, but yeah, hopefully you found these useful. If you liked what you saw today, hit the like button. And as always, if you haven't subscribed, then please subscribe. And I will see you next time. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.